Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fantasy match preview. This is for the game between England and Australia. The match is going to be played at the MCG which has really really long boundaries both sides square and straight so that would be something for you to keep in mind. Let's look at what best team we can make for this specific game. So first up in the keeping section we will have Joss Butler if he plays otherwise you can opt for Sam Billings he looked in good touch. In the batting section, Steve Smith has been an amazing touch. So has David Milan, played a big knock last game, got a pearler from Mitchell Stark. Otherwise, he's someone who takes his time to start the inning, so should be a good pick. David Warner, again a good choice. He's going to take his time, not going to play over aggressively, so a good choice. Like I had mentioned in my last review, Travis Head could be suspect at the start and that's what happened. Manus Labushain had a good knock. If he's batting first, you can consider him. I am tempted to continue with Mitchell Marsh. He played a really good finishing knock for his team. James Wynn should also be decent on this pitch and should enjoy the pace and bounce. So we can take a call on that post the toss. From the all-rounder section, Moin Ali seems to be playing one shot too many, not bowling enough overs. So not too keen to pick him. Sam Curran, I am tempted to back one more time. So let's see how that goes with him. In the bowling section, Adam Zampa, Mitchell Stark will be very good choices. So, so will Josh Hazelwood. Not any inclination to leave any of these guys. No real good reasons. David Willey has been bowling well. Batting has been contributing. So no reason for you to leave him and should enjoy the bounce at the MCG. And if there is some sort of grass left on the pitch, he should be able to extract some moment up front too. Now my last pick is slightly left field, so like I said, I'm slightly inclined to go with James Vince. I feel like he's a good cutter and puller of the ball and that is something that he can make really good use of and hence can be a good choice. Now let's look at captaincy and vice captaincy choices and before we do that, hit the like button so we have some good luck and you predict who will be your man of the match for this specific game in the comments section. Also if you have not tuned in to the telegram channel. You must do that right away. Go right now and tune in to the Fantasy Crick Pro Telegram channel on Twitter and on Telegram itself. You'll get all the latest teams and updates here. So in case you haven't tuned in, go and do that right now. Now let's look at Captain and Vice Captain. So when we look at captaincy and vice captaincy choices with the kind of batting style that Steve Smith, David Milan, David Warner, all three guys are taking, they become very very safe choices. Sam Curran was a popular choice but he did not seem to find that line and length and he did not bowl too much at the death overs which makes it a problem. Adam Zampa if he's bowling second is a good choice and Josh Hazelwood if bowling first. So I think I'm tempted to continue with Steve Smith but I might go with one of the bowlers if the conditions are favourable. Vice captain for now Adam Zampa. We can take a call post the toss on how that point goes. So this is what my team looks like for now. Now let's look at what best exchange 22 picks we can make for this game. So now we are on the exchange 22 app here you can buy or sell just particular players if you are not sure about a combination that you want to make. So from Australia, I'm tempted to buy Mitchell Marsh at 34. He is going to bat in the finishing order, a lot of boundary bonus points and he's expected to bowl too. So I think he's a very, very decent choice. Mitchell Stark at 46, two wickets if you expect from him, it's profitable and is a good choice. Ashton Agar if bowling second and batting first can give you 40 odd points. Adam Zampa if bowling second would be a good choice. Apart from that, Man is slightly overpriced I feel with the kind of form he's in. In fact, he's a sell candidate I would say, especially if he's batting second. And yes, the rest I would not fidget with. From England, when you look at the specific choices that you have here, I think James Wins at 40 is a good choice, especially if he is batting first. I think he's a really good choice. And apart from that, if you look at the other options, only David Willey looks tempting at 45 because if he gives you a wicket or two and some runs, that will be the job done. So the key of using this app is not to buy everyone, just to buy guys who you feel will actually give you that specific return. In terms of multi-bagger, you go with some risky picks. How does the multi-bagger system work? You buy a specific share of one player, rupees 10 example if I bought one share of Steve Smith. I'll get an estimated return of 9 times. So if Steve Smith is the highest pointer of the day, then from that 10, I will get rupees 90. But that is only 
if he is the highest pointer if someone else example if mitchell marsh is the highest pointer and if i bought steve smith i'll not even get one rupee back so that is the risk that you run there so keep that in mind but yes there will be some good buys that you will be able to make post the toss from the multi bagger section so do check it out and do let me know how you enjoyed this preview in the comment section thank you so much for tuning in and have a great game